we had a power outage yesterday and sometimes when that happens it kind of knocks all my settings out and so that's that's when I I lose my sound and I have to reset things and I didn't think to do that before I started awesome thank you so much and uh, let's get into our demonstration here but uh, since you missed what I said um, it's watercolor Wednesday which means I'm giving a free demo and today is a requested uh, demonstration on doing textures. So I found this really nice um, um, wood grain, this old barn and, and such, that had this wonderful um, uh, texture in the wood. So uh, so I, I took a picture of this and I, I saved it just specifically for today. And um, uh, yeah, if you're just joining uh, I do demonstrations every week and I do that on Wednesday mornings that is 10 a.m. Eastern time which is what time it is now just a little after and um, uh, yeah so I do that every week and uh, you can subscribe if you want to get uh, notifications about that so let's get into our demonstration this I was saying that the um, my printout, which is just some regular copy paper here, has printed out a little bit cooler than my reference image here. I probably will go with the warmer colors that I'm seeing in my digital image. Uh, so I have I have a strong vertical here. I have strong horizontals here, uh, which make it a little bit hard to sort of paint, you know, round things. Now, granted, this is mainly darker, and you know, I probably could go through a lot of this without too much trouble. But because this is a warm color, this is a cool color. Uh, I'm I'm going to mask this one off just because I think it'd be a lot easier to work that way. So I'm going to grab my soap and my masking fluid. Now, my masking fluid I've put into a little jar. So I'll be using that. I'll be using a, uh, a a brush for masking. So I have dedicated brushes for masking because uh, masking is pretty hard on brushes. So um, so this is just a little round brush that I use for masking, and this is mainly white, like clear masking fluid or colorless masking fluid. But I have added a couple of drops of cobalt blue to this so that I can actually see what I'm painting. So I'm stirring this up instead of shaking because shaking will create bubbles. Bubbles will create problems. So I am stirring it instead. I just wipe that off with the handle of my brush. And before I dip my brush into my masking fluid, I want to protect the bristles with soap. Now this is just regular old liquid soap. That's all that is. Stuff you use to wash your hands. So bar soap would be fine too. So I'm going to dip into my masking fluid. Let's move this out of the way. And I am going to mask off my um, rusty metal bits here. So I've got this this hook or this uh, loop here and then I've got the the hook that comes down and I'll try and get this on quickly and not too thick because really thick masking fluid will take a long time to dry and I don't want that just come right down here into this I guess this is a latch for a barn door or something but came across this place I was near um, Newcastle Ontario and just happened to stumble across this place called Oh, what's the name of it? Um, 
Dockville. That's what it's called. And what an interesting place. It, it is like an Old West movie set. In fact, it does get used for movie sets uh, quite often, apparently. Things like weddings and stuff like that. Anyway, came across this. Uh, most of it was closed. They actually have little shops and things in there, but uh, most of it was closed when I went. But I, I would definitely make a day trip to go back and and see what that's all about. Uh, but there were some like wonderful uh, photography opportunities there. Good morning. Melody and Dorothy and Karen, Bobby. <clears throat> Karen, so thanks so much for joining. Um, I've got two Karens. Usually I have a whole bunch of Pats, but <laughs> today it's Karens. So um, so now I'm going to look at this and I'm going to start thinking about, okay, what colors am I going to mix? And you might look at this and think, well, that, you know, it's barn board gray and that's it, you know, but actually there's a lot of really cool colors in here. I see kind of a pinky tone here. I see orange. I see yellow. I see blue. Uh, so really there's a whole lot of color in here, uh, more maybe more so than you might immediately think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing up some puddles on my palette and um, and start preparing for my first washes while the masking fluid dries. So I'm going to take my large brush here and I'll start mixing some nice wet puddles. Get rid of some of this stuff on my palette here, clear some space. and. Get this big one here. I have, um, I, let me tell you about the materials that I'll be working before I start that. Um, oh, it looks like it's turned off one of my cameras as well. Hang on one second and I'll get that on. Um, hmm. I guess this is just angled wrong, that's it. Okay, so we'll get this, let's see if we can get this in line here, so you can see when I'm actually mixing. Bear with me a second. There, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so I wanna get some yellow, so I'll get, I'm gonna use some areolin. I will use, oh, a bit of cobalt blue some of that in there and then there's kind of this this peachy pink color uh, so I'm gonna go alizarin crimson to make it a little bit peachy I'll mix a little of that yellow into it right, so I can get a little bit peachy on that one uh, then I have kind of a bright orange in, in this one it's uh, I guess that's just the, the way the knot has dried. So I'm going to take that areolin again, but instead of mixing it with a pinky color, I'm going to mix it with a warm red. So I'm going to go to uh, Rose Door for this. This is um, very similar to Scarlet Lake. And that will give me more of an orange. So maybe you can see the difference here that this is an orange and this is more of a peach. And so, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And, um, and then I need kind of a purpley gray um, color here. So I'm gonna go neutral tint. Yeah, neutral tint and maybe even a little bit of, this is, Quinacridone Violet, I believe, yes. So I'm going to use a little bit of that mixed into it as well. So I've actually got quite a quite a colorful um, array here for my first washes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Doris. Um, Doris is making the 
the um, watercolor meander book that I showed some time ago. Um, all right, so uh, what this is, this is like a building and uh, we have wood. It was kind of like a log building. So so this, and I don't know what they call this in a log building, building. it's mud or, or grout or, or what they call it, but it's what they place between the, um, um, the logs to, to make the building. And, um, but, but I was mainly interested in the wood textures here. So we've got smooth and then we've got the texture here. So I kind of liked that combination. And of course the rus rusty nail or rusty hooks fits right into that. Uh, I've only got a couple of little specks here, but I, I'm going to start over on this side, this left hand side, and I'm going to put in some of that peachy coloring that is in this portion right here. So I'm just going to come in on dry paper, but my brush is really filled up. And if you're working on dry paper, make sure you, you've got really wet paint. Something's got to be wet. It's either going to be the paper or it's going to be the brush. So in this case, since the paper's dry, the brush is wet. So coming right down here. Going around the, um, it's just you can barely see it, but there's another piece of wood here. And I've extended that a little bit, but Okay, so I've got kind of that peachy color in there. I'm going to get a little bit more down in this section, a little bit darker down here maybe. And the great thing about weathered wood, wow, you know, you can um, really take a lot of um, liberties with it because it's so, uh, got so much character and it's you know somewhat organic because it's wood and you know it's not like a you know it's not like a modern building that's got straight lines and everything it can all be cockeyed uh, which makes things a little bit easy now I want to put color in here but I can't do it yet because it'll just melt into that color there so where I can work is I'm going to maybe focus on these knots so we've got some yellow in here and then we've got that orange color that kind of blends into that a little bit. And I'm going to bring this in here and I'm just going to get these, these basic colors in here. And I generally will start my painting with a little bit brighter color than I maybe end up with in the end. And it's because I can always dull it down, but I can't brighten it up again. So I'm going to start off a little brighter and dulling is a piece of cake brightening is not so I'm just going to add a little bit stronger orange here that is areolin mixture mine's a hue or mixture and uh, I'm just making that a little bit stronger so I've got a similar type of thing with this knot down here, so I'll just do the same thing down here. Um, then I've got some more of this orange in here. And I'm using a really big brush for this, but it does have a nice point, so you know I can actually get into some fairly reasonable, um, you know, tapering and that sort of thing. Uh, the one, the one thing I didn't mask was this. Um, uh, bolt in the middle of this and I only did that because it's so dark uh, I don't really need to protect it because everything around it's going to be quite light so I didn't bother with that one but the other two I do need to do some light stuff around it um, 
or it needs to be in some places a little bit lighter. So uh, those ones I did mask, but the one in the middle I did not. So we have kind of a, oh my gosh, you know, just almost a, not white, it, it's kind of a, a tan, just a very slightly off white color here. It's barely gray, shall we say. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of this color, this uh, neutral tint here, and I'm going to paint in this entire Thing. My masking is dry now, so I can go through this. I think it should be a little bit more uh, warm, so I'm going to just pick up a little bit of that, just a touch of that areolan, but there, you can see there's hardly any color in my brush, but I wanted to get a little variation in there. And I didn't want pure white paper because I think pure white paper will end up being, um, you know, too stark, too much contrast. And being an old, old building, this, uh, this needs to have not too much fresh, crisp white. But I'm going to come down these mortar, I'm going to say it's mortar, but it's like, it's hardened like stone, looks like looks like concrete kind of thing and, and even though I picked up a, a really bright color like like uh, areolan mixed into that neutral tint it sure doesn't look very bright so that just sort of tones that paper a little bit um, that's actually going to look a fair bit warmer once we get the cools around it uh, but we do need to uh, think about where else I can work. And right now, I guess I can do a little bit right down here. I'm going to go a little bit more pink in this section right here. I like all these subtleties, you know, everything's sort of weathered and sun bleached and, and that sort of thing. But even so, there is, there's really nice color in this. So um, I'm looking forward to building up the subtleties here. But for the time being, I think what I'd like to do is get this dry. So I'm going to just take a moment and dry this so that I can start putting in the actual uh, wood. I have masking fluid on here, so I do have to be very careful that I don't heat it up. This is a heat tool, so I'm kind of staying away from the, the masking fluid because I don't want to bake it onto the paper and never be able to get it off. So I have to be very careful not to get it overheated. helps also to not hold your tool or your dryer uh, really close to your paper. I'm, I've got a fairly thin, fresh uh, masking fluid. The older your masking fluid is, uh, the um, more likely it is that it's going to really stick on the paper and be very hard to get off. So I don't need to make this 100% dry. I just make, need to make it dry enough that it won't bleed into my next color. So I think I'm all right. And I'm going to start taking some of my neutral tint here, a little bit of blue, neutral tint. Uh, I like neutral tint. It's, it's a really kind of soft, uh, soft gray, a little on the purple side. So I really like that. And I'm going to come right down the side of this barn board here. 
Now, as I'm putting these first washes on, there's something I'm thinking about, and it's keeping lots of the white of the paper showing through my color. Because if I cover that up, I'm not going to be able to establish the look of sunshine. So it's very important um, to be able to uh, have these lights transparent enough and, and showing through your paint so that you can um, create the darks and, and make it look light. It, it won't, won't look light until um, until you've got uh, the darks in there, so it looks dark at the moment. Now I'm going to bring a little, I had that orange color, and I'm going to bring some of that in here just to sort of dull the color a little bit, but also to warm it. And you'll notice that I'm kind of bringing it in in strokes just to give a little bit of, um, you know, variation to this. So I'll have some of that, and that's going to be kind of my underpainting for this. Come in along this piece of wood here. And I'm going to come in along these ones. And I'll have to paint around the knot, so I'm going to paint around that. And at this early stage of the painting, let's get a little bit more of that orange color. I could also be using a little bit of burnt sienna if I wanted. That would also uh, suffice for my orangey color to warm this up. So, you know, I can see I can make a kind of a muddy color here. And I will come in, and this, this is a big brush. It's holding lots and lots of, uh, lots of uh, paint in it. Now I don't have to worry about my this uh, diagonal because I don't have to paint around it because I have my important stuff. My, um, my hardware has been uh, masked off. So this isn't going to look too much different than the mortar, but that's only because um, I need to have the lights. So I have to make sure that this first wash doesn't get too dark. I'm going to start pulling down in this direction here. Let's get that little bit in there. And come across here. I think I'm getting a little bit too warm, so I'm going to come in with a little bit more uh, neutral tint and get some of this cooled down. Get some variations in here. Just got to be careful that if I'm, you know, adding things in, I don't get this too dark. Uh, but I like that kind of variation that's happening there. And I'm always stroking in the direction of the wood grain because, gosh, if it shows, I want it in, to be at least in the direction. So I'm going to come back down here. Got to get that. Oh, I almost got a hard line there. So I will have to just keep manipulating that and get that softened up. Nothing to panic about. Go around my knot again. You see I'm working fast rather than accurate, <laughs> although I am trying to stay as accurate as possible. So a little bit more neutral tint in a couple of places, um, you know, just to bring a little bit of character into this. Um, don't even mind too much if I get a um, you know a little bit of a, a blossom or a hard line. All adds to the character. There, just blend some of that out, and 
I'll just rinse my brush and run that through there just to soften that up a bit. All right, so I've pretty much covered my white paper, got rid of that, that's out of the way. Um, I like getting that out of the way early and you know, rather than taking one section and finishing it to perfection and then working to the next one, I do like to work work around my painting. So, um, you know, I've got you know a little bit of blossoming here and there. I'm just going to blot my brush. See how dry my brush is? And I can just tickle that and get that worked in. And I really don't mind. With texture, it is really quite forgiving because, of course, you can, um, you know, you can add so much texture on top, um, so you don't need to worry too much about uh, imperfections in your washes. Um, I think it's more interesting, to be honest. Now you might think that I would take something like a fan brush and I would just drag it along for my texture, but honestly, I don't really like that approach too much. I will uh, prefer to take something like a rigger brush and and paint it with a little more care um, so that I get a little bit more interest. The one thing about a fan brush is that the you know yes it's all kind of um, spaced out so that you know spanned out so that you get um, you know a whole bunch of lines but they're all going to be very consistent. And if I just pull this across, I'm basically going to have, um, you know, a whole line that's going to do this, right? So it's going to go up. If it goes up, every part of it goes up. But if you look at wood and the character of wood, it, it goes up and around things. And sometimes it gets bunched up and sometimes it spreads out like here and, and things like that. And that's the character I want to put in there. So I don't want to use a fan brush for that. Um probably more than anything I'm going to end up using a little bit of dry brushing. So I'm going to dry what I have again and uh, then I'll be able to come into the next layer. So just gonna dry this. Now most of this I put, I didn't wet the paper first to do my washes so this will dry pretty quick. So it won't take much I just need to have it dry enough so that I can start building up a little bit more um, uh, shadow and texture and things like that on it. Get Start getting the lines in last. Actually, I won't get the lines in last. I think I'll, I'll, I'll put those in relatively soon uh, because that's going to give me a better indication of um, um, you know, where I need to put the shadows. All right. So, just a little bit damp down here, but I'll work over here first. So, one of my favorite ways of getting texture is painting with the side of my brush, you know, dry brushing. So, I think I'll use a little bit smaller brush for this. Right, this one's a little bit smaller now. Even though I'm using a smaller brush, uh, this is a number 10 round squirrel hair brush. Um, it's dry, it's completely dry. And even though it's called dry brushing, I am going to dampen my brush. Dampen it, not soaking wet. Then I'll come over to my palette and I'm gonna pick up some of that neutral tint Neutral tint is such an awesome color. I'm, I'm really having a, a lot of, uh, getting a lot of use out of it lately. It's not new, it's been around a long time, but uh, I'm finding it very useful lately. So I am actually, you can see my brush is not, like I could shake the heck out of this and nothing would come off because I have, if you look at my puddle, there's not much there. I went over to my paper towel and I did one of those. So look at look what's on my brush. Almost nothing, right? So with the side of my brush, I'm just going to drag it and it's going to catch the texture of the paper. And I need to be looking for the direction. And this is like a feather touch. 
just feather touch. And it's giving me some great um, broken line there. And that's one of my favorite things. Okay. And we have some more under the wood. I'm being very careful not to go through this, this uh, horizontal that's across here. So I'm dragging this down and I've got some good texture there, but this is clearly going to have to get darker. So I have to pick up my paint a little bit thicker now, a little less water, a little more pigment. And once again, I'll give it a blot. You can see I re reuse my towels quite a bit, <laughs> but uh, And I want to make sure that all my wood doesn't look the same. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so I'm going to come down and really start building up a little bit more. And I could see... <coughs> Pardon me. I could see immediately that this was going to be a, a little bit too wet. So I'm blotting my brush a little bit more before I continue on. And... Got lots of character here. There's going to be a dark line dividing that, so I can just come down and look for those darks in here. But the underpainting of all these different colors, that's what's going to really give this the character. Um, it's going to give it some great, um, great interest. I like using the side of my brush so much better than using the fan brush. If the fan brush would really give me a, um, let me let me see if I can show you. If I did the same thing with a fan brush, I would end up with, you know, too too even of a pattern. Even if I've only got a little bit in it and kind of using it a little bit dry, but you can see every every stroke I make. Is, is all parallel and it doesn't have the same natural look to it. So it doesn't look, for, to me, it doesn't seem as um, convincing as doing it by hand. Yes, hello Jan. Yeah, uh, we are on baby watch over here. Um, my daughter's just about ready to have her baby. So, uh, so if I get a phone call in the middle of this, <laughs> I mean, she's not in the hospital or anything, but uh, yeah, could be could be any day now. Um, but what my fan brush is really good for is things like spattering. So let me just quickly show you how I might use my fan brush, and it's a little different than really the intended purpose of the fan brush, but this is the way I like using it. So I'm going to put a little bit of texture in here, so I'm going to... Um, sort of protect my my wood. Actually, if I got spatters on my wood, it wouldn't be much of a big deal, but I wanted it to look like there's some, um, I wanted it to look a little bit natural. So, see, I've just put paper towels around this little section right in here, and I want to take a little of that neutral tint. Let's take some of that neutral tint again. And I will pick up some in my brush and and I hold it fairly close, and I will tap. I just tap the brush, and I like this approach much better than using a um, a toothbrush, which which can sometimes leave like almost um, lines, like streaks, because it shoots off and shoots away from you. Um, this I can control so much fineness with it. 
and if I hold it close, you see it's it's not really giving me a whole big radius of spatter. It's it's keeping it pretty confined to where I'm trying to put it. All right. So that will give me a little bit of texture in that little little section there. I think it probably needs to be a little darker here and I'll get to that later. I just wanted to show you that spatter. Uh, so let's let's get into some of this other texture down here of the wood and I'm going to use the the neutral tint but I'm not going to use a lot of it. Now you may think that I'm going to try to do these lines with this but I'm not. If you if you imagine this photograph without those dark lines. Imagine it without. Can you see the variations that there's light areas here and then there's shading here. It almost looks darker. Can you see that there's actually a wood grain um, that you can detect between all the cracks? So that's what I'm going to try to um, capture with this uh, dry brushing. And blot my brush again and I'm looking for areas where this is going to have some of this darkening. And I'm, I'm following the contour of the wood, uh, or the pattern at least, I'm looking at that. I'm going to stop here at this lighter piece of wood here. And so I see that there's kind of sun that comes up and around the the knot here and then there's another one and another and yet another so you see that I almost put like a, a bit of a tiger stripe type of thing there and that has really nothing to do with the cracks Right? The cracks are all, you know, really more, much more horizontal. So I'm actually creating the, the grain of the wood. Um, and, the, you know, you might think that the cracks are the grain of the wood, and, and I guess somewhat they are, but, but mostly this, this what I'm doing right now is de going to determine the, the uh, wood grain. <clears throat> so I'm going to darken some of this, just add a little bit more... of the wood grain. I'm being careful not to to uh, overlap this because this object is in front, this piece of wood is in front. And And uh, although some of this is cropped off of my image, I'm, I think I can invent it. So I'm going to come around here and create that. <clears throat> and I'm going to invent a little, bit, a little bit right here as well. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, so I'm going to just drag this across. And bring that up and around this knot. I can I can invent a little bit here, which is fine. But I want to get this uh, this idea of this grain. And really getting on the side of my brush and just letting the the soft bristles and a soft bristle brush is actually much easier to use I think than a, a coarser brush in my opinion but I can get so much texture out of this now before I get too carried away with this and this is one of the reasons that I said I would um, get some of my darks in there. 
is that if I if I put all this wood grain on there, my line work is going to be very hard to see. You know, all those all those lines that I tried to put in. So I'm going to start putting in a few darks here with a little bit more neutral tint, and I'm just going to paint them in. So I'm going to look for my darks and try to get those in now before I get too much texture on here because then I'll never see my lines. The one thing about uh, texture is it's really hard to find your lines. So let's get some of the line work in here before it gets lost. Once again, I'm being very careful when I get to the um, uh, diagonal wood there. go a little bit darker and I don't have to get every line in but I want to get enough in that I'm not going to get confused so yeah, I can, and I can invent some of these others. Um, and most of these cracks are varying in width. They're not all the same, and there's there's a little bit of a kind of a crease down here, so I'm going to put that in there too. And I see that the the wood grain actually kind of dips down in those spots. My sound is echoing. Is it really? Um. I don't know why that would be. Is it echoing for anybody else? You let me know. Uh, somebody else can let me know if it's echoing. I have a feeling I might know why. Um, one second. Okay, so I just adjusted something. Hopefully that's working. And so I'm going to start looking for some of these cracks, which may not follow the, the wood grain direction. They might, but they may not. Sometimes you're going to get... Um, yeah, it's not correcting itself. I adjusted something, so I think I had my microphone on here twice. These power outages kind of mess me up sometimes. Uh, as I'm doing these lines, by the way, I am uh, I'm also looking for tapering. So uh, sometimes the line will get thicker, and sometimes it'll get thinner. So that means getting up on the tiptoe of my brush to paint very fine lines or pressing down on my brush to get something wider and so I've got this line here that I've got to get in that's a fairly wide one variation is the name of the game here um, without variation it will look a little bit too new, <laughs> which this wood is definitely not. It'll look a little bit uh, contrived, I guess is the word. So I'm going to come in here and get a little bit more, get wide here. This is quite a bigger shadow here. Come underneath the the knot. It comes out the other side as little lines, mostly. So get some of that in there, uh, but really want to have that you know following the contour of the crack, not the, not necessarily the wood grain because from this point on we have the wood grain here, but now this 
this actually comes kind of straight across. So that's the difference between the wood grain and the cracks. Um, they're not always the same like you might expect. And with old wood, that's, that's often the case. Especially things like plywoods and stuff like that. You can get cracks in it like that. So I can start to do this. Now obviously I'm I'm much, much, much too light at the moment. Uh, but I, as I said, I wanted to come in and get some of these darks in here so that they don't get lost in the texture. And then I have no idea where these lines need to be. I went to the trouble of drawing them in so I don't want to lose them. So looking for some of these dark areas and and obviously there's a lot of others you know I can add in later but I'm going to finish up my textures before I do that I'm going to come down here to the um, the bottom piece and start putting some of those textures in um, or some of the I'll start with the lines this time and let's see We'll go dark right there. Something like that. And another one a little further up, goes up and over the, the knot here. And there's a perfect example of a tapered line, right? It just kind of starts off really pointed and then I press on the brush and I can get a much wider line. So you know, make sure you're adding some of that into your painting for character um, and, and realism, really. That is that is the way the crack is, so um, I think right here is where that dark kind of crack in the wood is. So I'm looking for all those little things. I'm, I, I may not make it exactly like the photo, of course I'm not going to, but you know, little, little imperfections in the wood is all part of the character. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get a little bit more dark in here. So I'm going to go my with my paint, you know, quite uh, substantially uh, uh, pigmented at this point. So, you know, coming in with my paint pretty creamy, not much not much water here. I want to get it as dark as I can. And again, you've got these tapering lines. They get thick, they get thin. And sometimes they fade right off and then they come back again. And that's that's what makes the interest very interesting. So I will come in and I'm going to start putting some of the the darks in here too. Come in along this side. There's actually kind of a hole in here, it looks like. A little gap for the bugs to get in. And now I'm going to use kind of the side of my brush and, and get a little bit less color. See if I can 
start to emulate that that wood grain. I'm just doing this with very soft strokes here all in a row but a little bit on the side of the bristles not quite on the tip uh, if I make it on the tip it's going to make an awfully skinny uh, effect and I really just want to get this sort of long long diagonal sweep here So I kind of lock my brush and I pull my whole arm. You notice I'm doing that rather than doing this and then stopping and moving my arm and doing it again. So I'm trying to keep my stroke continuous. Give it that really dry brushed kind of character to it. spots where it sort of skips over. All right, so that's giving me some some nice, uh, a good start to that. I, I would not call that finished, but it's giving me a good start to it. And um, so I want to get some of my uh, orange mixed up again mix it into my neutral tint to give me a nice sort of brown color. A little bit more neutral tint. I don't want it too brown. And I'm going to do, now that I have some wood grain in here, I can start to really come in and build up on this and really create some of these great textures in here. Oh, that was a little bit too wet, but we'll make that into a into a crack. One thing when you're working on the side of your brushes, you can't always, uh, like you, one time you're just going to get it too wet. And you can always test it on a piece of paper first, but uh, I won't be doing that today. I'll just be painting directly. And you'll notice that you know sometimes I start right at the wood and that's so that I I don't inadvertently like pull the stroke into the that piece of wood so I'm going to just kind of use the side of my brush and pull away from that line So it's coming along, but it's, you know, a little bit of a slow build, lots of layers, uh, that kind of thing. I can see, you know, some of these areas need to have a little bit more of that neutral tint, just neutral tint. And, you know, I don't want to lose this wood grain, so I might have to hit it again. Oops. I'd have to hit this again with a little bit more color. I brushed in there. And again, the side of my brush. Of course, my very favorite part of this is going to be this, this wonderful shadow down here. But I want to establish all of my textures before I do that. Um, okay. So let's take this neutral tint here and I'm going to make the, the little bit of a shadow that goes the crack or, or right where the, the mudding or mortar 
uh, yes, it's still neutral tint, um, where the mudding or mortar touches the, uh, or connects to the wood, or is sitting on top of that wood. So I'm just going to come along this crack here, and I really want to make sure that it's it's got the character. I don't want to just take my brush and take a straight line and make a smooth uh, shadow here because, boy, it sure isn't. It's kind of dragging my brush in a sideways motion, and that's that's going to give me that. I'm kind of giving it a shaky hand thing too to make it look even more natural. So you can see I can really made like a deliberate squiggly line there. To make it look like there's a bit of an overlap. Um, so I'm jumping all over because I just don't want to keep working in one spot and um, creating, um, like getting it, getting the paper too wet because then I won't be able to get my dry brushing. Okay, thanks, David. Um, all right, so I'm going to take some of this neutral tint here, and I'm going to start pulling some of the dry brush up into the into the wood grain here, because there's kind of some roughness happening in here. I didn't get quite as broken a line as I would have liked, but it's light enough. I can cer certainly build on top. Um, all right. So there's actually some other shadows. Let's go. Should actually take this shadow over more. This could come right over to this, I suppose. Right to there. And there's a little bit of a crack gra gap in here, and it's definitely kind of ragged looking. It's a ragged line. So that kind of makes that break. And I want to separate also this, this wood up here. So <clears throat> separating it from the mortar or the mudding. Maybe one of you knows what that's called on a log cabin. I know I'll, I'll know it when I hear it. I just can't think of what it's called. Rather than just pulling my line down, I'm kind of doing a little bit horizontal, and it's so that I get the edge of the wood rough looking. So I'm getting that sort of raggedy, raggedy edge, and likewise with the shadow, it's got to match the uh, edge of the wood. <clears throat> wouldn't make sense to have this set edge ragged and then the other edge smooth. And it gets thick and thin in some places because the the mortar or whatever that is is um, is not entirely smooth either. All right, so we're going to come down under underneath here. And again, I got that I want to make it a little bit rough. I'm doing kind of a choppy thing, just bringing it right across like that. So I'm really getting the, some of the separations happening here. And <clears throat> blot my brush. And I'm going to give a little bit of texture to this um, uh, diagonal piece of wood.
I'm only kind of avoiding this only because I don't want to lose my lines with texture. Not that I have to necessarily keep like avoid this. It's just I want it, I don't want to lose my lines. So slowly building this up. There's probably fast ways of doing this. I'm sure there's fast ways of doing this. Um, I kind of like the realism of taking your time and observing where the imperfections are and things like that. So I just I have fun with it. I like the process of painting, so I don't I'm not in a hurry. So again, I'm using the side of my brush and I'm just giving a kind of a little broken you know where the wood is a little bit rougher there I'm just giving a little bit of a diagonal stroke or a, holding my brush diagonally and coming with little tiny strokes across Now, I do think that this mortar is going to need a little bit more color. I think you'd agree. So I'm going to get a little bit. I'm going to take this mixture here, kind of what I was using on the wood, but I'm going to thin it down, maybe, uh, maybe put a little bit more yellow into it. And I'm just going to come in over this and tone it down. So that's that's gotten that a little bit closer, a little bit darker down here, I think. So a little bit more neutral tint. And I'll come back in with, there's a darker shadow in there. I'll come in with that very shortly. Okay, I'll leave that. And even though I had already done the spatter, it's just going to soften that. And I can do more spatter if I want to. But, oh, that's why I, th I think doing these textures are so fun you can just the, like so much you can just paint over again so I'm gonna use a little bit of blue in my neutral tint for some of this uh, just get some a little bit of blueness and coolness in some of the lighter areas here so you notice I'm really using a combination of warm and cool tones I love, I love the warm, cool effect, especially in sunshine. You know, you're usually going to have uh, warm highlights and cool shadows, or the other way around. And this was kind of midday. Uh, you can tell by the the angle of the shadow, and that it's you know that's long shadows that come straight down. That this was midday, so that means that the the light was cool, and the shadows might be a little bit warmer. Uh, Although there, I'm going to put a bunch of color in here, so. But depending on how the light is hitting it, where the lightest parts are, it seems to be a little bit cooler. That could be the more sun bleached wood too, causing that uh, that effect here. And well, let's put a little bit of that little bit of that in this diagonal as well. Still being very careful though, not to cover all of my, cover up my white paper. I'm really trying to make an effort to, to keep the transparency in those highlights. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit more wood grain texture down here. I, I haven't done much down here, so I'm gonna use my blotted brush and try to get a little bit more texture down here. The 
sometimes it feels like there's nothing coming off your brush, but usually there's little bits at least. You may have to reload it, but I'd rather go too dry than too wet because once it fills in, it's filled in. Dragging it along. Getting some good build up here. My brush might be a little bit too dry. There's dry brush and then there's too too dry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's I'm not getting anything off the brush. That's working a little better. Get it a little cooler. So I'm going to adjust a lot of this in terms of values and things like that. But this will give me kind of a good start to my texture. Really coming around that knot shape shape. So I'm putting the texture all under we underneath where the shadow's gonna go. Alright, so I think I would like to take a little bit of this even in the middle of the knot. And in the middle of the knot, it's just a tiny little, tiny little stroke that I can try to make in a little bit of a circle. <laughs> but I'll come up to this one. This one seems to have like kind of rotted away in the middle of this knot really rough around my edges. I like, you know, that natural look, so I'm trying to get as much of that as I can. Dry brushing is something you'll probably want to practice a little bit on, you know, on scrap paper before you actually tackle your finished painting type of thing. But uh, you will get the feel for it. You just have to do a little bit of it. So I think I'd like to get this, this cast shadow in here now. So I'm going to take a little cobalt blue, some of my neutral tint. And this time, I've been doing a lot of dry brushing at this point. Now I'm going to go with a very wet brush, so diluted color. And I'm going to come right up underneath, maybe a little bit more blue here. I'm going to come right up underneath this, uh, this wood and create this shadow in here. So it's not blue, it's, it's kind of a blue-gray that I'm using. And I'm putting it in quite wet. across and this is going to come right down from the hook. It's right straight down. It's kind of a diagonal here. And I want to get my brush quite wet because I'm trying to get this on dry paper without creating brush marks. So I need to keep all my edges wet as I do this. And as I get a little further into the um, into the uh, 
into the shadow, I'm going to get a little bit warmer, so a little less blue. It's going to get a little bit stronger. Let's get it this in here a little bit wetter. So that I have some bit of glow in that shadow. You can see that it's receding into a darker area there just because I've made it warmer and slightly darker. I can still see what's in the shadow. I can still see all my wood grain under there, uh, but this very wet wash is uh, giving me a lot more uh, sort of depth to this. Let's straighten up the side of this piece of wood here. In fact, I'm going to carry some of this shadow up into this wood, so I'm going to bring it up here. A little bit on the bluish side, right up in here. And kind of come down and connect to this big shadow. And, and you can really see the dimension of this now. Uh, with the shadow in there. You can really tell what time of day it is. I think I'd like to get this part of the shadow a little darker. I can only do this while it's wet. If I need to darken it further, like if I find that, oh, this is dried too light, then I just have to wet, let things dry and then come back into it. If I do it right now, like I can see this is going to be too light. I'm going to have to come back in and darken that, but I'm not going to do it right now because things are sort of partially dry. That's asking for trouble. So, um, let me see. I haven't really done anything with this little guy over here. So I'm going to get a little bit of texture going on here. And with a little more neutral tint, I can create that, that shadow here too. Because there's a very long shadow that comes from this horizontal piece of wood. You can see this is making a big shadow down here as well. It's not as cool as this. Uh, you, know, you can see that this shadow is a different color than this. So don't fall into the trap of making all your shadows gray. This is coming in here. Now this there's there's the side of the wood that we see, and then there's the cast shadow. So this side of the wood is in shadow, but then the entire piece of wood is making a shadow on the second piece of wood. Now this is going to be too light. I can tell immediately that this is too light, but I will come in and darken it. I'm, I'm a slow builder. I, I like to ease my way into some of these values. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's the way I do it. So I don't think there is any right or wrong in watercolor. Well, yeah, there's definitely wrong if you're, you know, if you're trying to do something and it doesn't go the way you want, then obviously that was the wrong way. But, I mean, there's no rules uh, about what is correct and what is not. Like, there's different ways to approach everything. So, really want to get that ragged edge of that piece of wood. Maybe some some grain lines or roughness in there. Because every every horizontal piece of wood has sun hitting it and it's weathered away, so it's making shadows all on all of the grain. 
So now that I have kind of everything's got something on it, I can start coming in and uh, adjusting a few values and then I'll come in with my last uh, lines and cracks and things like that. So here's some a little bit more building up of the values. I can go a little wetter this time. Now that I can sort of see the textures and stuff, I can actually use a little bit wetter paint. Trying not to um, obliterate my my wood grain though. I just want to establish my shadows a little bit more. Again, I have to be careful of this one at the at the top here. I'll 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 work my way backwards <laughs> into this. So what I'm trying to accomplish by doing this is I'm really starting to um, preserve some of my light, light, light areas and tone down the rest. So now if I want to get a little bit more grain uh, looking like there's shadows from the grain, then I need to darken down some, some sections. If I just leave it now, it's going to look a little bit too, um, a little, you know, it's going to look too light. It's not going to have the depth to it. So keep building. I find many times I, I have students that will, they're doing great. You know, they're just awesome and they're coming along great, but they're too afraid to take it any further because they're the classic, I'm afraid to ruin it, you know. And if if you're afraid to ruin it, you may not discover how great it can be. So many, many paintings I see are like partly done. <laughs> they, they just never got to the finish line. So take some practice pieces and, and you know, go for it. Just try it. Try things that you're nervous about trying. Just do it on a practice piece. Then you, you're not going to be so intimidated. Now my, my wood grain's getting a little bit faint. So I'm going to just establish it again with a little bit more, a little bit more dry brush here. Don't want to lose it, so I just kind of have to keep coming back to reestablish things if needed. Some of these are warmer. And then I'll come back in after this and I'll I'll continue putting some cracks in. And this will start to really look dimensional once I start doing that. Alright, so... I'd like to see a little bit more warmth in some of this, so I'm going to put a little bit more of that orangey color in here. Oh, maybe even a little bit more yellowy orange. Just hints of it here and there. Kind of like that wood has, you know, a little life left back in it, but not too much. It's most of it's sun bleached and pretty, pretty gray looking. So just a spot or two. A little bit more of the blue and neutral tint, cobalt blue, neutral tint combination. And I'm coming across and just getting a little bit more shadow in a few places. And I think I would like to start putting in some of these additional cracks. So now I'm going to go to my neutral tint, but I'm going to go just about as strong as I can make it. Blot my brush. And just using the tip of my brush. Now I could use a, a, a rigger brush for this as well. A rigger brush is actually designed for this purpose. It's um, 
very long you can see it's got a long bristle on it uh, very narrow and the idea is that you fill up the bristles and because they're so long it just keeps feeding like a like an ink pen and it will you know the paint you won't run out of paint part way through your stroke so that's the advantage of that and so I can come in and get some really nice controlled lines here The only thing about the rigger brush I find is that it's it's hard to create a um, a taper because you can't press the bristles and really get too much of a wide line but it will be good for a lot of these so so I'm going to use it so when you do cracks look at your reference uh, they're not always sort of one continuous line sometimes they're you know, they just taper off and then they another one starts part way through the wood and that type of thing. So you're going to get a lot of that in in wood grain and I just thought I just silenced that phone. I hope that wasn't my daughter calling. <laughs> well, you guys are getting your money's worth anyway. No, she's she's. I was just talking to her a little while ago. It wasn't her, but that would have been funny. <laughs> not really, not so funny. But all right. So lots of like imperfections in here. This is what I love. And the more I build up these, some of these darks, the more in sun this looks, this looks, you know, more realistic, more dimensional. Uh, the more value I put into the, into it. So, oh, I have a shadow right here I didn't put in. Ha! I have to get that in. I knew something was looking wrong. So I'm going to get this. Oh, I can't do that. I just put a shadow in there. I'm going to come in and re-darken some of this shadow. I'm bouncing around all over the place here, but I'm reacting to what I'm seeing. So I'm just seeing that, oh, wow, you know, I don't know how, to, how dark to get with some things when other things are too light, so I adjust. Still trying to keep, maintain that bluish color in there, though. Um, the neutral tint is is so sort of transparent; it doesn't cover up. Like if I were to do this with Payne's Gray, for example, Payne's Gray is uh, going to cover up a lot more than the neutral tint will. So neutral tint's a great color for sort of neutralizing a color. I guess that's why they call it what they call it. So, how do I decide if a shadow should be warmer or cooler? Depending on the light of day, like the time of day, uh, this is a uh, this is a midday. So where the where the shadow is closest to the light, it's cooler, and then the further into the shadow I go, 
it's going to be warmer. So midday, you have cool light, you have warmer shadows. Late day, you have warmer light, or early day, warmer light and cooler shadows. And so this is, this is going to give more that midday look to it. Uh, but honestly, I would say um, refer to your photo. My what my color palette is and if there's any burnt sienna. No, there, I'm not using burnt sienna, although I could. I did mention earlier that I could be using some burnt sienna. Uh, I, I did mix an orange, so I used a little bit of areolan and rose door, but then I dulled that down, so it would give me something similar to a burnt sienna, right? So if I add a little bit, it's a similar type of thing. So I might come up and tone down some of this. Actually, I don't wanna tone that down too much. But I'm going to take some of this shadow here, and this is going to have to come across here. Let's get a little more color going. And I need this, this distinct shadow that comes down from here because it doesn't make sense for it not to be there. That makes a lot more sense, right? So it's cooler closer to the light, and then it's warmer closer to the darker shadows. A um, little bit opposite from what you might be used to. So, But sometimes a midday painting can be quite lovely. I like these long, long shadows here. All right. So I think I'd like to paint in this this little area here and get that darker because right now it's just kind of looking a little funny. So let's get that a warm shadow here because it's this pretty rusty inside of this. This is the uh, bolt, I guess, and it's a rusty bolt, so it's going to have a lot of this warm tone around this. But I would say look at your reference picture to determine what uh, what your shadows should be, whether they should be warm or cool. And just, you know, make a judgment. Is this, is this looking a little bit more like a blue or is it looking a little bit more like a rust? And, you know, there's many factors that come into play because it, uh, it can be... Um, you know, any time of day, and the the and the color the color of the object can affect it as well. So, all right. So, get that in there. I'm gonna blot just blot this quickly, just to lighten a little bit of that. And I'll repaint back into that some of that color. Just felt some of it was getting a little bit too, getting away from me a little bit, so wanted to get a little bit more of a strong shadow right there. And obviously I need to build that up a little bit, but uh, uh, anyway, I you know what, I don't think I'm going to finish this one for today because, uh, just because of time, I've been, I'm well into it now, but uh, I have a long way to go. But this is just a build, build, build kind of thing, and you are going to find shadows. Uh, keep highlights, because they're extremely important, and... 
taper some of your cracks. Uh, look, look for the dry brushed areas to get the textures and that sort of thing, um, or to get that broken edge look. And adjust values as you go, because they're always changing. Look for uh, subtle, subtle changes in the um, direction of the cracks and things like that. Like there's, there's just a slight little bend to some of this. Right, so I could actually do that. And if I need to, if I need to do a fairly straight line. I will pull my arm, like, let's say I want to make this a little bit straighter, I'll pull my arm rather than my wrist to create that straighter line. But we're not looking for perfection, of course, on a, something with this kind of texture. This is, this is looking really rustic, but I'm probably going to build this up a little bit more but first of all I want to make sure I don't lose all of my textures in here I'm gonna make sure these are still here don't lose those in my shadows I have to build them up a little stronger if I'm gonna put a darker wash on that kind of thing and then I'll put uh, the shadow back on top but uh, Probably won't go too much darker on that. Uh, and details, well, that's just, uh, you know, the tip of your brush and observation, right? It's always about observation. How, how good are you at observing what exactly are, are you looking at? I usually don't have to tell people how to do detail because you're all pretty good at that. Um, just don't get to detail too soon, right? Get Get all this wet stuff in first, uh, but do establish some of those cracks and things because you will lose those lines in the texture. Uh, those those can disappear on you, and then you go, oh my gosh, I don't know where I, where I'm going with this now because it's it's disappeared on you. So get those in early, and uh, hopefully you can see, you know, the the building and how it's getting more established like this one needs more work but this area up here is starting to really build up and look a little bit more realistic so that's as far as I'll take it today I, I can't I can't finish this one in the short time that we have but uh, thank you so much for joining me and um, uh, tune in next week um, you know unless unless we are uh, in baby mode next week we'll uh, I'll be here so uh, yeah, have a great week and uh, keep painting. Take care. Thanks for joining. Bye.